I had never been to Asia before, and because the continent's so huge and growing so quickly, I always assumed that my first visit would be totally overwhelming. I always assumed that the language, the food, the amount of people would be like an assault on my senses. And let's be honest, that kind of discomfort isn't exactly the first thing we look for when planning a vacation. But pretty much everyone I knew who had been there spoke about Bali the exact same way. All the newness and exotic experiences of a new continent, but presented in a relaxed and approachable way. It wasn't long before I'd begin wondering, in these days of over-tourism, how has a place that's been so popular with tourists for decades managed to successfully preserve its soul? Travel is more accessible today than ever before, but to find the best experiences, the right vacation rental can make all the difference. For years, I've worked with the inner circle of professionals leading this movement. Now I'm going on vacation to experience their work in person, and I'd like to share with you our stories as we redefine hospitality on a whole new scale. My name's Matt Landau. This is The Vacation Rental Show. When you travel to a place as far away as Bali, every day counts. I was lucky in that my work schedule permitted me to stay two weeks. So I chose two vacation rentals to experience the country. One up in the mountains and another down on the beach. Villa Sagita sat up in the mountain region of Ubud, which is Bali's spiritual tourism center. Bye, how are you, bro? Good. <laughs> Good. How are meet you? Meet me again. <laughs> meet you again? Yeah. Nice to meet you. Me too. How are you? Arriving to Villa Sagita was a huge relief, not just because it was stunning, but because I had been traveling for almost 24 hours and finally arriving to this place in the middle of the jungle felt um, unusually like home. Nice to meet you. Oh, <laughs> I'm David. I'm David. Nice to meet you. David, nice how are you? you too? Maylee and her husband David <laughs> flew in to stay the week with us. It's one of those places which uh, it's almost like a sanctuary. You get here and you just feel you can unwind and uh, fit into the Bali days, as they call it. And the Bali days means you lose track of time, you lose track of the news, and you lose track of some of the things that normally would be a central part of your life. Um, and it's so nice just to be away from that for a while. And this is very difficult work. Someone must do it. I've always felt that parents make great vacation rental professionals. They have this innate desire to take care of you. And we got to see that on display. I got a tour of the villa and I got to see where I would be staying, which was this traditional jungle, uh, Balinese cabana, uh, with some of the most ornate woodwork in the ceiling, open to the elements all around. <laughs> yeah, I know it's magnificent, eh? You guys. And I'm... there's no nails at all. Yeah, that's what, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they was just telling us. Yeah, no, it's spectacular. Oh, it's really you beautiful. guys, this place yeah. is so... So we thought you'd like this room. Well, I don't <laughs> think I will ever want to leave this room. This is probably the coolest bedroom I will ever, ever slept in in my life. <laughs> Despite it feeling like home, with all those creature comforts. There was also all of these other things, sights, sounds, stuff that we don't have <laughs> in my house. So there was also this distinct feeling that I had traveled somewhere entirely new. And it wasn't more than 20 minutes into my arrival that I had a delicious cocktail in my hand and I was diving into the swimming pool and making myself at home. Welcome to the jungle now. <laughs> what a cool, yeah, what a cool place to work. Yeah, of course, it's lucky. This is my village. This I'm is from, a... yeah, this village. Oh, you're from this very village. Yes. <laughs> the house manager at Villa Sagita is Yande, who lives around the corner. He's one of those people with a natural gift for hospitality, the ability to balance friendliness with professionalism. 
We've just been so fortunate because guests love him, he loves guests. He came from a five-star hotel in Ubud. He knows what makes great hospitality tick. He's got that personality. Yande does the shopping for the villa's guests each morning. And when I asked if I could join him at the market, he was more than happy to bring me along for the ride. So first, Yande took me to Pajang, which is the local market where people go in the morning to buy their food for the day. Um, sambal mata, cordial, fresh sambal. We're using this flower. Oh, wow. This soup. Never heard of that. Yande knew everyone. And it was also nice because I didn't recognize any of these ingredients or these little things that they were selling. And Yande was able not only to translate for me, uh, but to give me a little bit of context. I was able to now discern between vegetables and meats. I was able to discern the difference between a dessert and some kind of pig innards. That was helpful, you know? I also got the chance to buy some ingredients that I had always wanted to try. <laughs> Tell her that I heard that she has the best peanuts in the entire market. <laughs> Tell her that. Oh, that. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, just one back, one. no more than that. Thank you. There were some amazing fried peanuts and these fiddlehead ferns, which I always see on TV. Um, which you can purchase, um, I don't know how to describe it, kind of looks something like that. It was the feeling of being with a, a local celebrity. He knew so many people. Uh, it was the feeling of being in good hands. See, that's the secret, the towel. There we go. Or I could just walk like this. <laughs> I could get used to this. <laughs> this is like a duel. <laughs> and cooking with Yande back at the villa was a really special experience. It was not a formal restaurant, so there was no strict time or stress about the preparation. Come now. Come now. Yeah. More chicken chopping, chopping again uh -huh. for the sauce of a burn. These were just things that Yande had picked up over the years, so it was neat to be able to learn from him in the preparation of these things, uh, but also just kind of uh, learn about the Balinese culture in, in general. By far, my favorite dish that night was actually just a condiment, the sambal matar, which was kind of a, a raw relish of shallots and chilies and garlic. And it would be a recipe that I would take home and end up preparing for myself. All food in a foreign country tastes better when you have prepared it with a local. That is a fact. And the fish we ate that night was no exception. Oh, well done, Matt. Could be done no, this is well done, Yande. But Matt, moral support. <laughs> and this is a great traveler tip, by the way. A kitchen is arguably the greatest asset of a vacation rental experience. So take advantage of it. Head out to the local market, buy local ingredients, explore with local recipes. It is an easy and fun window into the local culture. <laughs> Despite us sitting in Bali at the moment, we're actually South Africans, David and I, and we live in Johannesburg. And my history, I think, like most people on this vacation rental journey, could not be further from hospitality, if possible. The first time I brought it to Bali was on honeymoon, and um, thought that Bali would be an outstanding holiday destination. So I thought, sure, I knew very little about, about the experience. I imagined this paradise, I imagined everything I'd seen in Lonely Planet and what have you. We landed at Denpasar, not a pretty place. Drove through to Kuta, equally not a pretty place. And I looked around and I just thought, I've married the wrong man. I genuinely was mortified. I thought, this man thinks that this is paradise. And now I've got to spend the rest of my life with him. 
I was completely gobsmacked. The next day we left Kuta and went straight to Ubud where everything changed. It was just so beautiful, so perfect. Paradise found, marriage saved. <laughs> <laughs> You chipped your nail, you stubbed your toe, you lost your phone. Life's a rolling stone on a broken roller coaster. Okay. It's all good. Move on. Throw your hands up. Move on. It's all good. Today's your day. The moment you walk out of Villa Sagita, you enter rural Ubud, the most serene place for a morning run. I found this cute little two-lane road meant mostly for motorbikes that wound its way through expansive rice paddies beneath palm tree canopies and in between these little villages where life went about as normal. Just a bald white guy with short shorts passing through. I ended my run meeting Meili and I joined her at one of Ubud's most famous temples. Meili gifted me a sarong at the beginning of my stay and Yande taught me how to tie it up and I'd learned that she actually gifts all of her guests a sarong which allows you to get into local temples. And it's actually a great tip for hosts, giving a special gift at the beginning of the stay that is not only relevant and symbolic about the destination, but also functional, allowing your guests to experience the destination in a different way can make all the difference. And if you want to innovate like Meili in this sense, click below and go behind the booking. You ever get the feeling that a whole temple Indonesians are looking at you? Scroll to your left a little bit. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> One of the first things you notice about Bali is its religion. The only Hindu island in a nation chain of Indonesia, it's deeply rooted in spirituality. You can't go more than a few feet without seeing some kind of offerings to the world above. And Bali's fiercely committed to preserving this religion too. It's not a show that the people are putting on for tourists, which come in by the droves. It's a ritual that would go on with or without us. Meili explained how blessings in the holy waters work and how even the most touristy places were such a must see when in town. The locals still believe in themselves enough to share that with other people as well without feeling shy about what it is. You know, they'll invite you to any kind of ceremony because they're proud of it. And that's what I think makes a big difference. The balance that the people of Bali have devised in keeping certain aspects off limits for foreigners struck me as something of a modern marvel, a formula for sustainability that uses foreign money to flow, <laughs> but it doesn't depend on it in order to survive. I now see why Bali has always been on so many people's bucket lists. I see why it will be for many decades to come. This is my first ever... What's the name? Pugantamu. I think people travel because they want to experience other things. Otherwise they would stay at home or be tourists within their own countries. It's just a multi-dimensional place to come. So if Villa Sagita is the mysterious dream girl up in the mountains, Villa Cocomaya is the Mac Daddy down on the beach. It's a three-story, modern-looking take on a traditional Balinese home. Do you like coco young coconut? Of course, I love yeah. young coconuts. We have young coconut here. Yeah, can we drink that? Yes, when the guests, this way, this uh, loose one, two, three. You were drinking them earlier? Uh, no, I give to the guests. Mm. If you want to try. I would love to try. I will take for you. Yes, <laughs> you have any old coconuts? Uh, Komang is like the house mother of Villa Coco Maya in Chandidasa. She not only looks over the villa and the staff, but has this wonderful um, maternal-like hospitality sense about her. She's just there to take care of you and make sure that you are enjoying yourself. The, the backyard of Villa Cocomaya kind of blends in with 
the sea. And there's all these really cool traditional boats parked out in front. So while it is very private and the most um, expansive view you could ask for, it's also part of the beach community. Fishermen roll up every morning and you can buy fresh fish and kind of interact with folks uh, while you're sipping your morning coffee. <laughs> Big mission. And after that, so we make the uh, we cook. <laughs> yeah, and, sausage. Yeah, and after that, so we make the lawar. We call it lawar. Lawar. Lawar nice. Lawar <laughs> Yeah. That morning, I wake up, having my coffee, and I notice some guys on the beach washing what appeared to be like ropes or strings in the water. Of course, they were not strings, they were pig intestines. The ceremony tonight? Yeah, yeah, okay. ceremony is the hill. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Okay, okay. You gonna go? I'm gonna carry, um, uh, Made, no, who's pig? Made, uh, uh, I think I'm carrying Made's pig. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Typically, my curiosity, um, doesn't always resonate with people in a foreign land, but these guys were so friendly and they explained that they were washing the pig intestines for a ceremony that evening. We, we cook together later. The men cook or women? Yeah, yeah, the but the men cook. Yeah. The men are cook, I'm cook. But the woman <laughs> still the woman ceremony. still a ceremony, the woman. The men are cook. <laughs> and the boys, I'm cook, I'm cook. <laughs> They said they'd be going back to their house, and then I was welcome to come back and take a look at preparation. So I wandered down this little alley, and about 20 meters behind Villa Coco Maya, I stepped into a different world. Wow! Four pigs? For ceremony. Yes. We were just talking to Kutuk. He's cleaning the intestines. The older men began a session of show and tell, assigning me directly into the morning rituals. Coffee with the family elders chopping coconut for the sauces. Then these deep fried intestines that tasted like a slightly funky bacon. Pretty good. For me, I think for you, I don't know. Delicious. Uh, this one also, this is nice. Nice and spicy. Oh, oh nice oh. kick. Water. Oh yeah, that's so good. Try again. Little chicharron? Yeah. All right, last chicharron in the morning. You can take, not it's okay, no problem. You can do like this. I can take a whole thing as I walk home? Yeah. Why not? Like popcorn. Uh, so, so like this. No, this is uh, plenty. Like this. <laughs> this is plenty. Like this. I don't want all of those. Try it. I don't want all so many. <laughs> so, we call this, we call this lawar. Yeah. This is from the little bit blood. Little and blood. this is the, the white uh, lawar. No blood. Betty joking and crying. Amen. So in Bali, when you cook food, you normally sit on the floor. You've got a chopping board in front of you and you're chopping like this. You don't do any of this fancy schmancy stuff that we do in Europe. It's just chopping. This is a ceremonial knife that the Balinese men will use to pre prepare food for ceremonies. And it's made, ugh, you've got to be very careful, this is the most dangerous right. point. It's made from the recycled steel of a suspension spring of a car, little arch thing that goes over the top, and it's called a black ass. <laughs> I was getting not only a crash course in Balinese food, but a master class in hospitality, an unobstructed look into how you prepare for a ceremony. And I realized that if hospitality is the first step, to dismantling the barriers of the world, then vacation rentals like Meili's have a really important role to play.
like a pilgrimage of pork. Little did I know that the mountain was super, super steep several kilometers up into a cliff. Each of these suckling pigs represented a newborn of the year. And what you do is you carry the suckling pig up to the top of a mountain and you hang it in the tree so that I think no bugs get on it, but has something to do with connecting with the gods. What it really makes for as a visitor is the most surreal of experiences, a whole bunch of toasty, suckling pigs looking down on you hanging from giant trees. <laughs> About an hour and many bottles of water later, we reached the top of the mountain where a ceremony between the spirits of good and evil would commence. people fighting and fake fighting and jabbing fake knives into their chests. Some of the women had fallen into trance and they were just dancing and I was just kind of shocked. I didn't know what to think, where to look, whether to protect myself, whether to get involved. It was a really, uh, one of the most unique religious experiences I've ever attended. Kuman sat there very calmly saying, that God is a rich God and that God over there is, is a evil god, and that god is a strong god. There were no yoga poses or spirulina smoothies here. This was the real Bali. It was mesmerizing, and it was hard to understand. That's the ultimate sense of belonging, when you see someone you actually know in a place that is so removed from your home. Snorkeling in Chandidasa is awesome. When the tide is fully up, you can walk right out the back of Villa Coco Maya and see an amazing amount of fish. Um, I love swimming long distances, and I even saw a shark. I went swimming just now and I saw a shark. <laughs> I did. I did. They laugh at me, think it's a joke. I'm good, I'm good. So we've got two more girls coming to join us. Um, and then we'll head off and we'll walk up into the villages in the countryside on the hill behind us. Um, and sort of see what there is to see. We'll visit a guy who makes palm wine or tuak. He sometimes prepares a bottle for us just to have a little taste of. Ooh. Because it's never too early. Never. <laughs> we have a theme on this show. Dress with the basket on her head. There were coconuts and cherries, ripe bananas and blueberries, and her lips were ruby red. All the people of the town would come and gather round just to listen to her song. With a smile, she would say, It's such a lovely day, everybody sing along. I had never been to Bali, I didn't know the language. And I didn't even know what nasi goreng was. I built this thing I didn't even really know I was going to build. I found the land uh, and then had almost enough money to buy it, so sold some shares and extended visa cards and... Dad! The brainchild of Penny Williams is Bali Asli, a culinary institution. And we specialise in offering our guests really authentic, traditional Balinese experiences, whether that's lunch or an adventure with me through the countryside. Uh, part of Penny's um, love for Bali is its people, and part of Penny's love for Bali is its food. It's not my place to go changing traditional recipes, it's about preserving them. So if this goes in, it goes in. 
Okay. Uh, when you get home, this is very difficult to find, so don't worry too much. Um, just if, you know, don't tell them I told you that. <laughs> I had, you know, five or six close Balinese friends who are what I call different various cultural advisors, and they were helping me along the way. And that's how we created the team. The biggest hurdle I had to come over was learning how to become one with the compromise. Because as a chef, we do everything from heart. And as you know, if you have to compromise something that you've really done from the heart, it hurts. And that's why chefs get so upset about things. It's chopping and then you're preparing that. I don't know, baby. Baby cooling, no good. <laughs> okay, thank you. In the Western world, especially where, you know, my background in, in a hardcore sort of old school kitchen, you can abuse people and get away with it in all sorts of ways. But here, if you even sort of raise your finger or your eyebrows at someone, that can be a big insult. So you really, really have to learn to manage people and befriend people genuinely, completely from the heart. And I really believe that I'm living in this country, so I need to adjust myself, adjust my mental state of mind to live with these people. The life is the culture. One doesn't live without the other. On my last night, I invited over some of my new friends for dinner, a chance to give back in even the tiniest of ways to the people who had made my visit to Bali so memorable. And since we never got to try it the day of the ceremony, I surprise commissioned Wayan to prepare the last of the suckling pigs. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hey, how are you? Whoa, dinner! Dinner is served! Yeah. As we settled down to eat with our hands, local style, I had the chance to reflect back on my last two weeks in Bali. And it all started to become clear that the Balinese people's secret to success lies not in trying to attract any particular kinds of travelers or tourism, but in putting their own happiness first. And that when you do that, it's infectious. It is in turn what draws visitors from halfway around the world. This confidence, this self-worth, seems like a recipe for any destination, a practice we could all probably use a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Cheers. 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 Sometimes the character of a destination, sometimes the meaning people give to it, but oftentimes a mixture of both. This is Bali. This is the Vacation Rental Show. Living in a world where 